uh, today's lecture we will be looking at the patentability requirements and specifically we will be focusing on the novelty doctrine of patent law because novelty is the heart of patent system. Uh, it is the heart of the national patent system. It is also the heart of the international system which is now regulated by patent cooperation treaty. Now, before that actually we need to understand that what if this is a course on patent search for lawyers and engineers. Now, the moot question is this, what is that to search for? Now, the we need to search, this is actually a, a, a lawyer or a person having technological knowledge, he or she needs to search whether an invention is patentable or not. And in order to understand what is patentable, we need to look into the Indian law in this regard, which tells us that what are the criteria that must be fulfilled uh, to make an invention patentable. Now, at the outset, we will find we just need, we need to know that patent is granted only for an invention. And to be very precise, from a very general point of view, invention means a solution to a specific problem in the field of technology. So, that means there has to have a problem with the pre existing technology and if someone provides a solution to that problem, it would be considered as an invention. Now, we all already know that we have seen from the previous lecture that an invention may be with regard to a product or it can be also with regard to a process. Now, so far as uh, before we get into the legal provision in this regard, uh, let us try to understand that what makes an invention different from discovery. Now, say for example, uh, when Einstein wrote discovered the famous equation by which energy and matter can be converted to energy can be converted into matter and matter can be converted into energy, it was already pre existing in nature. He made a discovery of the natural principles which were existing, but an invention is actually therefore, a discovery is also adding to human knowledge, but when it when it comes to invention, invention also is something which basically contributes to the human knowledge. But it is actually, it not merely discloses something, but it suggests something an act to be done which results in a new product or a process and or a new combination of old product and the old result. So, what is the distinction? The distinction is this that a discovery is a mere understanding of a principle which is existing and it is a disclosure of that principle. Whereas, when it comes to invention, it is also a mechanism of disclosing something, but that disclosure does have a tangible concrete result and which is in the form of a product or which is in the form of a new process. Now, the legal provision uh, in India is governed by international obligation of India. We into India is a member of World Trade Organization. Now, this WTO treaty, it is actually the WTO treaty has come into existence on 1st January 1995 and prior to WTO, the GATT system was there and which was actually, which was in existence since 1947. Now, this WTO agreement, it deals with intellectual property and there is an annexure to the WTO agreement and this annexure is called trade related aspects of intellectual property rights, which forms annexure 1 C to the WTO agreement. And then section article 27 clause 1 of the WTO the of, of TRIPS agreement, it states that actually the members of the WTO, they are bound to give patents in respect of inventions in all fields of technology, irrespective of the fact whether it is a product or a process, 
but it must have certain criteria. What are the criteria? That the, the product of the process, it must be new, it should involve an inventive step and then it should be capable of industrial application. Now, there is a footnote which is appended to article 27 and, and that footnote in fact says that inventive step is equal to should be considered as obviousness and industrial application should be considered as usefulness. Now, with this regard, so in any law which we make in India, it has to be in tandem with the India's, it has to be in tandem with India's obligation towards WTO and pursuant to that, we have a definition of an invention in our patent act. The patent act 1970 as amended, as amended and updated, it gives a definition of invention. The definition is very simple but actually it lays down the constituent element of an invention that makes an invention patentable. What it says? That it says that in invention as I, I will read it out from the definition itself, invention means a new product or a process involving an inventive step and capable of industrial application. So, anything which is actually first of all which is a, if it is a product or process it is a material patent is available but it must be it must actually involve it it must be a new product secondly it must involve an inventive step and thirdly it must be capable of industrial application so from this definition what we derive we will call it the the trinity of patentability and this trinity of patentability is actually it has come from india's India's international obligation and this trinity is the well established understanding of patent law in almost in all countries. Now, before that actually we need to also understand that it is possible that a particular invention in a particular jurisdiction say a, a, a particular inventions relating to atomic energy as we will see in the next slide it is not patentable in India. So, even if an invention although it is qualifying all the criteria of patentability, but still it may not be patentable because it is not eligible for patent protection in a particular jurisdiction. And then after say once we check whether it is patentable within India or within a specific jurisdiction where we intend to file a patent application. The next thing what is it needs to what needs to be addressed is this that whether it does have the patentability criteria or not. The, the things the criteria the requirements that make something patentable that must be there and this is the trinity of novelty, non obviousness and usefulness. In addition to that while submitting the patent application we have to also comply with the national law with regard to the disclosure norms. So, disclosure norms whether how the written application should be done, how it should be written, what would be the formatting of the claim portion, where exactly the property right resides, all this has to be mentioned in, in the is mentioned in the national law and the rules they are created there under and by which the disclosure norms are basically being, being, uh, being described. But now, uh, so far as the patentability is concerned, patent the requirements of patentability is something which is actually which is required at the stage of grant of the patent and it is something which would be basically would which, which can bother the patent holder during the entire lifetime of the patent. And this patentability criteria, the criteria of novelty, the criteria of subject matter eligibility the criteria of uh, non obviousness and all these criteria, it can be raised at, at different stages of the grant and as well as the life of the patent. Now, first of all, the, the first initial stage where this uh, the, uh, the patentability issues are being raised is the obviously the examination stage when a person has filed an application for patent he is seeking a patent grant from the government 
uh, the patent examiner may raise issues and there, 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 are, there are issues can also be raise, raised by the patent office uh, re with regard to the novelty portion and in, in certain cases may be with regard to the non-obviousness issues. And even uh, the, when the, it, it is the, the issues of, of what you call patentability can be raised by someone who wants to oppose a patent grant and that is under section 251 of the patent act. And then from the date of grant within one year, there is a window period. Within that window period, even post grant opposition can also be filed. And after that one year from the date of grant, then throughout the life of the press, uh, uh, life of the patent, the revocation of pay, anyone who one who thinks that this the patent does not qualify, does not have those criteria of patentability, he or she can apply for revocation of patent and this revocation petition can be filed before the intellectual property appellate board IPAB or before the high court uh, as a counter claim in an infringement suit. Now, with this actually, <coughs> let us look into, uh, let us have a kind of snippet view of the patentable subject matter in Indian law. To be very precise, as we have seen that sec since article 27 of the Truth Agreement says that patent has to be granted in respect of all technologies irrespective of the field of technology. Therefore, patent, if it qualifies the test of invention, it patent has to be granted. But we have created a specific list enumerating the items that are not patentable and sometimes those provisions are debated issues, uh, but th still we have those provisions. And some of the key provision I will mention before I move to the doctrinal understanding of the novelty. First of all, it says section 3 of the patent act contemplates that a mere discovery of a new form of a known substance which does not result in the enhancement of the known efficacy of that substance substance is not patentable. Suppose you, we, you, we, we have a new, uh, we, we know a, a substance which is known for, which is known to the world for a long time and then suddenly if we come out with a kind of new form of that product and that new form no way enhances the, what you call the, the efficacy of that product in that case the patent cannot be short in India. Now it also says that a method of agriculture or horticulture is not patentable. Further the process of medical treatment or process of what you call diagnos diagnosis or process of therape therapeutic and other treatment of human beings, these are also not patentable in India. Now the, the other important uh, what you call exclusion is plants and animals in whole or any part thereof other than microorganisms are not patentable in India. We have seen in, in America law, the famous case of Harvard Onco Mouse, where in certain jurisdiction Harvard Onco Mouse was actually given patent protection. So, in fact, it is a patent in respect of an animal, but in India such kind of patents would be not will not be available since the patent statute specifically says that uh, patent uh, patents are not available in respect of plants and animals. However, for new varieties of plant, we have a separate legislation which is called Plant Breeders Plant, plant Variety Act we have and that act actually uh, a plant breeder can seek protection under that act. Then the key, the most important factor is this that a mathematical formula or a business method or a computer program per se is not patentable in India. To be very precise, actually if you look into the other jurisdiction, particularly in USA, you will find that today all computer programs are in fact actually protected by patent. Now, see com computer program consists of the high level language which is the which is the source code and then actually it is 
it is transformed, it is actually translated into an executable format which is called the object code. So, far as copyright is concerned, copyright law protects both source code and object code of the, co copy of, the computer, of a computer program, but copyright law does not protect the functionality, whereas the patent law would obviously be uh, protecting the functionality. So, let me explain it with, with, an, with the help of a simple example. Suppose a, a well known cook has written a book that how to make Hyderabadi biryani. Now, so far as the, the English text is concerned, by the language is concerned by which he has written the, the text, that English text, that language is protected by copyright, but the method of making new, new type of bi Hyderabadi biryani, which is disclosed in that book is not protected by copyright law. So, this, this functionality part of making new type of biryani is not protected by copyright law and if he has gone to patent office and got a patent in respect of that, he would be able to prevent others from following the process mentioned in his book and, and, and preparing biryani following the process. However, the problematic issue is this that what is computer program per se with regard to this there are different interpretations coming up. But uh, a, a in general we will say that a computer program per se means a computer program actually which has a physical element involved and that can be patented in India. Otherwise, a computer program as such as it exists it cannot be patented in India. In addition to that section 4 of the patent act also makes it crystal clear that an invention relating to atomic energy will not be patentable. Now, with this let us look into what does this novelty means, what, what does this novel newness means. At the outset I, I just want to tell you that it is not possible for someone to come out with a novel invention every day. However, when we look into the patent filing statistics coming from different jurisdiction, we will file that every day, every year huge number of patents are being filed. Therefore, see if, if novelty is something which no one has done it before, in that case the, the, uh, the, the patent office would be having no other work. But novelty we, we need to understand it from a from the perspective of law and the concept of novelty is a techno legal concept. Now, first we will start with the definition of novelty and in India we have a definition and that is embodied in section 21 uh, i of the patent act. Now, the 2 1 i of the patent act what it says that actually I will read it read the provision and then we will try to understand that what are the nuances and intricacies of the provision and what is the ambit and scope of this provision. Now, to be very precise new invention means an any invention or technology which has not been anticipated by publication in any document or used in the country that means in India or elsewhere means elsewhere in the world, elsewhere in the world before the date of filing of patent application with complete specification. That is then the explanation comes the subject matter has not fallen in public domain or that it does not form part of the state of the art. So, the, the, the definition of the novel, the definition of new invention which is nothing but the definition of novelty, it says that it should not be anticipated by prior publication in any document or used in the country elsewhere. So, we have in fact adopted a kind of global novelty rather than a territorial novelty which is valid only in India. Now, uh, see to be very precise this novelty requirement, this is the heart of the patent system and it also performs very important economic function uh, and we will we'll try to understand those. 
those aspects. First of all, an invention is therefore not novel if it is and if it is anticipated by prior art. So, if, if an invention is is novel, that means uh, in order to actually uh, have a novelty, the invention must be something in respect of which there should not be any prior art. So, that means the invention must be new at the time when it was invented. And we will create an working definition of prior art for this slide and this what does it mean? That it means simply all knowledge that was that is uh, that was available in the public domain at the time of the invention. And the most important factor is this that novelty is not something which needs to be established or proved, but the lack of novelty is a is a ground for denial of patent. Uh, now, how the patent system, the novelty doctrine in patent law performs a, a economic function, a, a kind of uh, what you call a, how it reduces the social cost we need to understand. Now, whenever a, a monopolistic pricing level is fixed, suppose a person has come out with a product and since that product is not available in the market, he would be charging a monopoly price in respect of that product. Now, this monopoly price is arbitrarily fixed and we have seen in the last lecture that this actually a part of it is also used for the purpose of recouping the expense which the patent owner has made in research and development of the product. Now, there is a social cost involved. What is the social cost? Number one, uh, uh, first of all, when the product or the process is patented by the patent owner, the, the, it is there is an under utilization of the patent product and the patent process, because by having those what you call monopoly alike rights under section 48 of the patent act the patent holder would be preventing others from making and using those process. So, even if I want to, even if someone wants to use that process, he cannot utilize it till the patent is valid. Then secondly, as I have mentioned that the, the price of the product or price of the process is basically, it is arbitrarily fixed and therefore, there are individuals who want to have that product. But he or she cannot afford to have that because of this monopoly pricing and as a result of this a dead weight loss has been created and this is actually this is an this is the highest example of allocative inefficiency in patent. Now, therefore, what does it happen? What does, does it do? Number one, it novelty requirement it ensures that anything which is already available in public domain a patent holder by through a patent does not take it back to his individual own private domain and charge a monopoly price to the society. And therefore, so this is this is performing this is basically in fact reducing the social cost, because if the novelty doctrine is not there anything which is actually already available in public domain or less unknown things in public domain if an unscrupulous patent patent holder would basically cover those inventions in his or her patent specification and claim and thereby he or she would be trying to exercise a kind of property right over those product and processes which are publicly available. But because of this check of novelty, what has happened now? Uh, because of this check of novelty, what has happened now? The patent holder would not be able to monopolize those products and processes. Now, when a when someone comes out with an invention and if he or she thinks that it has the it is fulfilling the patentability criteria, he or she needs to do a kind of check that whether 
someone else has done it before or whether there is prior knowledge or prior publication in respect of that invention. Now, there is a reference frame and this reference frame in India is regulated by the statute and there are exceptions to this reference frame. And what constitutes this prior art against which the claimed invention has to be compared and contrasted to find out whether actually it is new or not, there, there is actually a provision and there are provisions which creates exceptions to this. Now, what it includes this prior art reference in India, it includes number one, it includes previous publication. This publication may be a journal article, it may be a kind of internet material, it, it, it is publication in any form and again we know you know that whether irrespective of the fact that whether the publication is within the territory of India or outside India, because in India since this so far as novelty is concerned, we are applying the global novelty criteria. Now, the second thing is this that if there is a patent and in that patent there is a claim and that claim is basically with respect to the invention uh, which has been currently claimed by the person who wants to seek the patent, provided that the claim must be a part of a complete specification and the patent application in, re in, in respect of which we are compar comparing the uh, claimed invention, that patent application must be filed after 1st January 1912. There is an exception. Suppose uh, as a, somebody publishes his own, somebody has published without the consent of the inventor, somebody has published the content of the invention without the consent of the invention. In that case, there is an exception and in that case, this publication, this prior publication will not defeat the novelty. Then if, if you have, if, if the patentee or somebody else has communicated it to the government, this would also be a part of the prior art reference. There is an exception. Suppose if the patentee or the or the the, the patent applicant has basically uh, disclosed it to the government or communicated it to the government uh, because the government wants to do an investigation in regard to the invention, obviously it would not defeat novelty. Then prior public display, if somebody has displayed the the patented product or the process in public, it would also defeat the also defeat the novelty. There is there are exceptions. Number one, if the central government is organizing an industrial exhibition and then the central government comes out with a notification that anyone can display his or her invention in this industrial exhibition and that would not be defeating the novelty, that gadget not notification, although there is a prior display, public display, it would not defeat the novelty. Then if someone is making a kind of paper presentation before a learned society and then later on the, pub, the paper has been also published in the proceedings of the uh, learned society, then also the novelty would not be de defeated, provided that within a period of 12 months, the person who has displayed the invention or who has presented the paper has filed the patent ap in a, a application. But at the outset, any anyone uh, would actually basically, any, no one would advise that one should go for a kind of paper presentation or display of the patented invention before the grant, before the filing of the application. So, it is a risky thing and one should not do that but the law is very clear in this respect. Now, the, the most important one is this actually one can see the patent involves launching a new product and a process is actually a kind of, a, a kind of uh, expenditure which patentee has to undertake without knowing that it will work or it will not work. We have seen that there are many patents which were actually up even up to Supreme Court, a inventor or his company where he is working has fought up to the Supreme Court 
and when it was put to practice in practical use, the patent did not work. So, a patentee can also in can also see before the product is launched that how effective, how commercially viable the product is and therefore, he can conduct a kind of reasonable trial and within a period of one year from the reasonable trial, he has to file the patent application and this is allowed and this would not defeat the novelty. And then if there is a prior public knowledge and that prior public knowledge may be a form of traditional uh, knowledge, may be a knowledge which is available in a traditional knowledge digital library that would also defeat the novelty.